Good morning. We welcome you all to worship this morning, and we have a special worship service planned for you and a special event after church. So we have many announcements. The first is, unfortunately, Stephanie is out sick. Fortunately, Bonnie Benjamin is filling in for her. So thank you, Bonnie. Um, Coming up this week, we have many, many things. But first, let me ask, is there anyone here today who is a first-time visitor who has not been here before? Yes, wonderful. Do we have someone, none of them can hear me. Cindy's on it. We have a special welcome bag for you that she will come deliver to you. We're glad you're with us. Moving through, we are now in the middle of our Angels Among Us series. We have today and next Sunday, and next Sunday we will have even more Angels Among Us. So come and see what I mean by that. Um, The concert is still up because of Stephanie's illness. It has been postponed until this Friday. So this Friday night at 7 at the Unitarian Church in Orange, um, we hope you will join Steph and a number of very talented musicians for that service. Today is the second Sunday. It is the healing service, and so um, if you have appointments, don't forget them. Also this Sunday after church is a new thing, caroling cookies and cocoa. We are going to have special cookies prepared by Lisa that are all ready for us to decorate. So this is not meant to be a children's activity. This is meant to be an intergenerational activity. So... Get a cup of coffee or a cup of cocoa, sit down at the table and with somebody you don't know, if possible, and sit down and decorate a cookie. We'll sing some carols. We'll just have some fun Christmas time together. So we hope you will all stay. We have 225 cookies. We got work to do. But the special thing is, when Lisa texted me, she had a typo. She told me she made 2,235 cookies. And I thought, I didn't know we were going to be here next week, into next week. But 235 we've got covered, and we're taking them home. There's not a special thing for them. This is a gift to you, so stay and enjoy. Next Sunday, is our, it, we are going to celebrate as Christmas Sunday because we will not have church Christmas morning, which is a Sunday. Next Sunday will be Christmas Sunday, so we hope you'll be here for the special 10 o'clock service. Also next Sunday is the holiday cookie drive through starting at 1 in our church parking lot to benefit uh, the D- Jimmy Fund, and we hope that you will drive through and get cookies. And since you're in your car, keep driving to Ringe and join us for the open house um, at Bove Point in Ringe. It's from 2 to 4.30. Come for the whole time. Come and show up and have a snack, whatever, but come and join us. Al's truck is going to be here for one more Sunday. Um, We are doing very well. We've collected a lot of food. We're nowhere near last year. I know that's because lots of folks are hurting and lots of folks were extra generous during the pandemic. But if you're one of them that can spare something, lots of others really are struggling right now. So if you're able to make some more donations of food next Sunday, we would really appreciate it. Also, if you've brought socks for the sock tree and do not want to carry them in and put them on the tree down in the the entryway, you can put socks in the truck. Al will sort those. You can put angel tree gifts in the truck and Al will sort those. So one-stop shopping. We're making it easy to be generous this holiday. I shouldn't say we. Al and Bonnie are making it easy for us to be generous. And a gift card if you don't want to do shopping yourself. So, so many options. And if you need hints of what to bring, here's some other things. If you're thinking, I want to round it out a little, the reverse advent calendar gives you a way to do that as well. And then moving up, of course, we are moving always towards Christmas Eve, which will be our candlelight service at 7 o'clock. We will be a wonderful service of lessons and carols. We have some amazing music planned for you and some lovely scripture readers, and we hope that you will all join us. Um, A special treat that night, I'll just give you a sneak preview, is that 
um, Dominic LaJoy and Matt and Kenny and Josh will all be with us as well. So um, we will be thrilled to welcome them to our, sorry, to our service for Christmas Eve. In person, in person. Yes, they will be here for real. So um, that will be exciting. Um, and I should say my daughter will be here in person too. So it will be a nice, a nice evening for everybody, and we look forward to meeting your extended family as they are able to come. Are there other announcements you folks have? Yes, thank you. So I'm just going to repeat that so everyone can hear it. And basically, Salvation Army Angel Tree gifts are due by next Sunday, if you can get them next Sunday to church, to, to the O'Connors or in the back of Al's truck. That would be great. And if you would like your offering donation envelopes, there are some on the back table, so feel free to take them. And um, you can give. Um, if you're taking a giving envelope, if your name is not on the box, please add your name to the list under the number, work, because otherwise I'll have no way of knowing who it is. Or make sure your first one is a check. <laughs> yes. Somehow tell us who you are or it doesn't matter. We'll thank number nine. Yes. A couple of brief announcements. I'll try to make them brief as possible. I thought Al was going to do this one, but I'll take the pleasure. Uh, this afternoon in Peter Sam Orthodox Congregational Church at 4 o'clock, it is a brass quintet. It involves Steve Babineau, which he has been here before playing trumpet for us. It involves uh, the Tandy Brothers from Orange, and it's a couple other gentlemen that play brass horns, but I'm really not sure who they are. So I invite everyone to come there. Also, my daughter's boyfriend, Bobby, who is down in Camp Lejeune. He's actually outside of Camp Lejeune. Um, he is a Marine. Um, he is going to be with his company starting tomorrow. So uh, continue prayers and support for... Uh, one of our local Marines, he actually starts his training in classes for his infantry training. And a bonus, we found out, that he will be home on December 23rd for at least four days, but we are hoping for 10 days. So it may be a short visit, but it'll be great to see him and hang out with uh, my daughter and his son for the Christmas holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you'll notice that on the back of your insert, you have the annual open house, the first annual on one side, and on the other side, you have a story, and I invite you to take the time to read it. This was inspired and shared by Brenda Lacoste. Uh, she's part of the kindness team and is taking it to heart and into her family. So we wanted to share that story with you. Yes, and Jenna has an announcement. Just to tell you guys about another musical event that's happening in Gardner, the Greater Gardner Community Choir today at 3 o'clock is doing their Christmas concert. It's $10. I'm singing in it, so if you want to do something else, it's at 3 o'clock at the Bethany Baptist Church in Gardner. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Yes. A reminder that the moms group will be meeting on Monday night at 6.30 in the pastor's office. All right. The, I thought someone said something else. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to pass the hope of Christ with your neighbors. For each time we connect with one another, hope grows. Let us pass the peace. I'd like to invite the Elwood family to come forward. And we also have one other surprise in the middle of the service, so you'll just have to wait and see what that is. John, the one you sent to point us to your coming. Your light will come into the world and fill our hearts with joy. The angel declared, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy. The joy is the birth of Jesus Christ, which we await during this season. This Advent, 
we eagerly seek a joyful new beginning. We give thanks that you send messengers to call us to greater faith. We ask that in these days we prepare for you in prayer and acts of holy compassion. Shine on us, O God of joy. Every angel seems to use do not be afraid as an opening line, but perhaps no one needed to hear it more than Joseph. What was happening to him was the stuff that ruins lives. As a man in that time, he had all the rights to abandon Mary and preserve his dignity when he learned of her pregnancy. The stakes were high, but the angel's message of encouragement was to see a difficult circumstance not with dread, but with joy. Let us join together in our opening hymn, number 120 in the red hymnal, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Please be seated. Join me, calling on God. 
Holy living God, blessed Jesus, guiding spirit. A light within us, your flame of joy is dead. Grant us openness to hear your message. Grant us courage to be your messengers in the world, creating more joy in the midst of Now we have a special moment in our service. This was one of them, right? It was, yes. Yeah. And so he would, and everyone really appreciated it. So we, that was his offering for this morning. Was. We all have a senior moment. We all get <laughs> that. I call them senior moments. But yeah. So maybe you want to talk about what, uh, what you were going to give. Well, if you remember the auction last week, uh, last weekend, $38,000 plus. I know. And one of the gifts, one of the things I bid on, I, uh, was Dean's was from Dean's Beans. And I kept the cop the uh, the drops and the cocoa, but the rest of it is an offering for the church. So he's giving he's giving us because he likes our coffee. He's giving us Dean's Beans gift of Dean's Beans coffee, and uh, uh, Nicole's holding it here, and we thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Thank thank you, you very much.
words from in, in your 134. Just read that first, first, first two lines, and I'll, and I'll get set on that. Just read it. Oh, that, oh, thanks. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above while mortals sleep. The angels keep their watch of wondering love. O morning stars together Proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to men on earth. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given, so God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, how, how no, descend to us, we pray, cast out our sin, and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Buddy. He didn't talk in the scriptures, but his feet did it. He would, I think if you were using 21st century comics, he'd be called Action Man. <laughs> <laughs> because he led the donkey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, then Bethlehem to Egypt. And, and believe me, there were no highways then. <laughs> and as Father Manton from the Mission Church in Roxbury put it many years ago, great saints then in cathedrals, but St. Joseph was the, was the patron of the common man. Amen. For him, they named an aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, and I have to tell you, first of all, you, you got a standing ovation after singing that, and you need to know that. And secondly, raise your hand in this congregation, and I will tell Buddy the answer. Even if you hesitated at first, how many of you could have sung all of those verses by heart? <laughs> Not a single one of us, myself included. So thank you so much for offering your gifts, buddy. Uh, glad to. And we're glad. Thank you. Thank you. So today we have the opportunity to hear the story of the birth of Jesus, the Anointed One. It's quite a remarkable story, although Joseph doesn't seem impressed at the moment. Mary was engaged to marry Joseph, the son of David, but they had not yet married. And yet sometime well before their wedding date, Mary learned that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. 
Joseph, because he was kind and upstanding and honorable, wanted to spare Mary shame. He did not wish to cause her more embarrassment than necessary. Now when Joseph had decided to act on his instincts, a messenger of the Lord came to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid to bed Mary and bring her into your home and family as your wife. She did not sneak off and sleep with someone else. Rather, she conceived the baby she now carries through the miraculous wonder working of the Holy Spirit. She will have a son and you will name him Jesus, which means the Lord saves, because this Jesus is the person who will save all of his people. Suddenly, Joseph woke up from his dream. And he did exactly what the messenger had told him to do. He married Mary, and he brought her into his home as his wife, though he did not consummate their marriage until after her son was born. When the baby is born, I will name him Jesus, Emmanuel, Savior, God with us. Years and years ago, Isaiah, a prophet of Israel, foretold the story of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in just this way. I know I'll fall over it. So one day this week, I read a story about crime on the streets of LA. In skimming through the incidents listed in the article, one particular story caught my eye. I was shocked to read in the description that a short person had been pickpocketed. pickpocketed. After reading it, all I could think was, how could someone stoop so low? Now that joke may have nothing to do with joy, but I hope it brought a smile at least to those of you who've been teasing me about being short in the last week. I expect many of you have encountered times in your lives when the way you interpret your feelings about a particular event or a circumstance or something happening in your life has not always been exactly the same way that someone else has seen the story. Dennis King suggests that our views of others' choices and others' behaviors are often a bit different from the way we might view ourselves, even in the same circumstance. For example, when others take great risks in life, we probably think they're being a little foolhardy. When we take chances, however, we are adventurous. If someone else suggests a correction, They might be being nitpicky or fault-finding, but I suspect when we do the same, we offer polite, constructive criticism. When someone else kindly speaks of others, sometimes he's a flatterer, or worse yet in our world, we say a brown noser. Yet if we said the same words, we see ourselves as being thoughtful and considerate. When the other guy or girl seems set in their ways, they are obstinate. But when we are set in our ways, we have strength of conviction. When we don't care for our friends' friends, we are just astute judges of other people's characters. But if your friend's friend doesn't like us, then she's prejudicial or judgmental. I suspect none of you know what I'm talking about. Different points of view, different perceptions. Often all of these things open tremendous chasms between friends, neighbors, even between family. 
misunderstandings of what is seen and heard often become the groundless basis for nasty rumors or permanent divisions between people. Think about how that could have happened, but didn't, as we find out how Joseph encounters the fact that Mary is pregnant with a child. But before we dive further into the story, let me ask you this. How many of you, when a wonderful opportunity for you arises seemingly out of nowhere, almost miss the joy of the moment because you immediately begin worrying? Have you ever asked yourself some of the what-if questions? Have you ever, in the face of a new and exciting project, asked, well, what if I have to move to take this new job? What if my spouse doesn't understand why I feel I need to do this? What if my children, what if my parents need me? Why would they want me to do that? What will others think if I take this risk? Or perhaps you immediately simply thought, well, I have to decline. This opportunity, though it sounds amazing, doesn't fit into the life trajectory I had planned for myself. Well, if you know what I'm talking about here, I want to tell you two things. First, you are not alone. So very many of us have had this very same internal conversation. Let's go back to our story this morning, the evidence of which is still around me. This story when we had a chance to see the first Christmas moment more from Joseph's point of view. When we enter the story, Joseph is engaged to a lovely young villager named Mary, and his life is just beginning to take shape in a lovely way. No doubt, as many newly engaged couples would feel, he's full of images in his mind of what married life will be like. He's probably thinking how proud he will be to have Mary on his arm out in the world what sweet children they will have together, where they might establish their home, and how Mary might add that woman's touch to his life. Then, suddenly, Mary discovers she is pregnant. But how can this be? We don't know. We're not told in Scripture how all of this went down as far as Joseph hearing the news. Did Mary run to him and tell him the moment she knew? Or did Mary ponder this too in her heart and maybe was still searching for the right words to break the news to Joseph when she began looking pregnant? However it occurred, we know that Joseph, at least initially, was not happy. Mary telling him she was pregnant did not elicit the jumping up and kind of a kind of joy that that news might sometimes bring. Likely, that's an understatement. We don't know if Joseph even gave Mary a chance to explain, a chance to tell her side of the story and the whole story of the angel before Joseph began worrying. Initially, he was probably worrying about how this might look to others. After all, Joseph himself suspected Mary of infidelity at first. In addition to it looking like he was betrayed, this news likely had the unaffected, undesired effect on him that he was less than, that he was not all she wanted. Isaac Butterworth writes that Joseph may have thought, wasn't my love enough for her? I guess not. I guess not. So what does that say about me? He may also have lost a little bit of trust in Mary, and maybe not only in Mary, but anyone for at least a time, doubting himself. He might have asked himself, how can I ever love again? How can I possibly risk another broken heart? Whatever Joseph was feeling, 
And we don't know for sure, do we? Because the text doesn't tell us. But whatever it was, we know that he was a good and faithful man, because it does tell us that. Even though in his mind he had been dealt this dreadful blow, even though the foundations of his world had been shaken, even though he had been hurt, and hurt deeply, and was now in a fit of worrying about so many possibilities and so many questions, he didn't seek to retaliate. Mary had wounded him, but one of his immediate thoughts, we are told, was that he wouldn't do the same to her. He knew if he had to, he would just dismiss her quietly and make this as easy as he could on her for her future. Now, if Joseph is anything like the rest of us, I suspect this news kept him tossing and turning in his sleep. Ever have one of those nights? Those nights when your mind is spinning and spinning and won't shut off, and you just can't quite, quite stop thinking about how you ended up here and what you're going to do and when you're going to do it and what comes next? I suspect Joseph did, too. Joseph's life had been interrupted. This isn't how he had planned for things to go. He'd always been careful. He was known for his sound judgment. How could something have gone so wrong? With these worrying thoughts churning over and over and over in his brain, eventually, out of sheer exhaustion, I suspect, he fell asleep. And at long last, in that time of sleep when he left room for God to speak in, even then, his sleep was interrupted. He was awakened at first by a dream. Not a, nothing unusual about that, but it certainly was an unusual kind of dream. It wasn't the usual vision of sugar plums dancing in his head. His vision was of something much more frightening. His vision was of the angel, an angel who came to him and called him by name. Joseph, the angel said, do not be afraid. Joseph, your fears are unfounded. The baby that Mary is carrying is from the Holy Spirit. And here we come to the second thing I want to tell you. Sometimes there are times in our lives when we let our doubt and our fears and our worry rob us of seeing the joy in a particular event or a specific moment. By this dream, not only was Joseph's sleep interrupted, but his sadness, his anger, his disappointment, his suspicions, all of these were interrupted as well. And why? Why? Because the original opportunity, the opportunity for him and Mary to have a life together, to have children as they planned and to raise them up, that dream came alive directly as a message from God. Eventually, in an instant, in an instant, God can change the planned direction of anybody's life. Some of you know that firsthand. Others may still think that might not happen. But you are still here, and God is still working. God can instantly change the planned direction of one's life if if we set aside our worry, if we believe, and if we follow. And God did just that with Joseph, because Joseph did just that with God. Joseph probably thought at that point his life was pretty well planned out. He had his marriage arranged for him, his vocation lined up. He was ready to move forward. But just when everything looked promising, his world came crashing down. 
he discovered that his bride-to-be was pregnant. But God intervened again and encouraged Joseph to let go, to let go of his worry, to move from fear to joy, to quit his worrying and to move from worry to joy, for there is joy in hearing that he was to raise a son. And there is joy in choosing to follow where God is leading. For joy is the very echo of God's life within us. You see, in Joseph's dream, an angel of God appeared and confirmed everything, everything that Mary had said about the child she was carrying. Then, joy of joys, God told Joseph to set aside his worries, to take Mary as his wife, and to name the child Jesus. This wasn't any ordinary dream. No, it was so vivid, and the words of the angel so powerful, that Joseph awakened knowing that the Spirit of God had spoken directly to him. For Joseph, Michael Treston says, the Christmas story began with disillusions, with disappointment, with grief, and with great worry. No doubt the news of a pregnant fiancé would have been hard to accept, but his disappointment was rather quickly replaced with relief and soon after with joy as he realized that this child, this child that Mary was carrying was for God's purpose and was to be no ordinary child. Points of view matter. You can see from this slide that points of view matter. For both Mary and Joseph, their point of view of the birth of Jesus was an intimate one, and each one began with an angelic message that they were the earthly parents chosen to raise God's son. Mary, the virgin mother, Joseph, her betrothed, were privileged to be key participants in the beginning of the Christian message. This same message rings out to you, to all of us, to me this morning, as we look at this story from different points of view. Mary and Joseph accepted the angel's message from God as truth, and they received it in faith. This is the message that we must grab hold of and never let go. Whenever you find yourself asking, why me? What will others think? Could I really do this thing that has come to mind and I now cannot quite shake? Remember that whatever has gotten a hold of you might just be a direct message from God. And when you hear that message or feel those stirrings or urgings to move in a particular direction, perhaps coming from multiple people in your life, Remember that those people may indeed be angels among us who have come to encourage us to follow where God is leading, even if to the world it may make no sense. It took an angel to convince Joseph of the importance in God's plans. What is it going to take for each of us? What is it going to take for us to wake up from the dream and to realize how important every single one of us is to God's plan. We have learned that there was hope for Zacharias and Elizabeth, and there is hope for us. We have learned that being a messenger of peace is a wonderful gift we can offer each other, and that the more peace we spread, the more peace fills our own heart. And now we know that when God speaks to us, we need to listen and we need to follow. For it is in following God's lead that we are moved from worry to joy. Taking these to heart, we realize that everywhere we look, there are indeed angels among us.
Amen. As we prepare now to come together in prayer, I have several prayer concerns we wish to lift up this morning. Prayers for Sheila St. Laurent, who is having knee surgery this week. Prayers for Joyce Pizzaio, recovering from her knee replacement surgery. Continued prayers for Shirley Bach, for Ralph, for Bruce. Prayers for Bobby in the Marine Corps and prayers for Vincent, who has been honorably medically discharged and is now home. Are there other joys or concerns you wish to lift up this morning? Yes, Joy. On the loss of Joy's nephew, Craig, unexpectedly this week. Yes, buddy. Well, it's great to come off a prayer list. That's wonderful news. Well, we're grateful that Renette and Letty are both doing well. So, wonderful. Are there others this morning? Yes. Continued prayers for Brandon and Vanessa who are continuing to raise money and struggling with the leukemia diagnosis and treatment. And also prayers for Michelle and um, Amanda and Taylor's weight loss coach, Michelle. Um, whose brother, Craig, whom we just mentioned, passed away. Very interconnected to many in our congregation. Yes. Apparently, Leonard King passed away yesterday. So prayers for him and his family as well. Absolutely. For all of those who have lost loved ones who face their first Christmas without them. Prayers for the family of Bruce Hill's good friend, Dave, who they lost this week. Wonderful. Prayers for Jerry Noyes of Thanksgiving, that the implant in his back is the temporary one seems to be working, so he may be a candidate for a permanent one and some pain relief. And prayers also for the Noyes' daughter, Jen, as they're going through some difficult times right now. I absolutely agree. We cannot forget the people of Ukraine, all they are going through and all they are struggling to hold on to. Great. Prayers for Vincent from Ga Winston from Ghana. Prayers of gratitude for good health that he has had this year. And let us come together now, first in a time of silence, then in a prayer of the people followed by our prayer response for this season. Let us come together in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we pray this morning for all those whom we have lifted up to you. We give you thanks for your presence. We give you thanks for your ability to speak into each of our hearts with, much we, with what we most need in any given moment. We have lifted up so many this morning, O oh God, by name. And we know that you will reach into each of their lives, that you will find messengers to move in and among them offering exactly what they need from you right now. Loving and gracious God in all times and all places, we lift all of our concerns to you and we give thanks to you for all of our joys. And we pray, O oh God, that the words of my mouth and the messages of all of our hearts are acceptable to you, are heard by you, and are answered in your time and in your way. Loving and gracious God, we pray as always that you hear the prayers of your people. Amen. among us sent down to us from somewhere up above they come to you and he in our darkest hours to show us how to live to teach us how to give to guide us 
As we prepare now to collect the morning offering, I invite you to give as much and as freely as you are able. Let us collect the morning offering. Loving and gracious God, we ask that you accept these, our gifts, that you bless them and us as we put them to work in this, your church, in this community, and out into your world. Accept these, our gifts, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in singing our closing hymn, Joy to the World, and during the last verse of the hymn, once again, I invite you to ring the sanctuary.
share, to share our message with all whom you encounter. And in addition, I ask you this. When this Christmas song comes to your, across your path this week, as it probably will, stop for a moment and remember the reason for this season. We can know joy right now, even in the midst of everything else happening in our lives. For God desires so much to be with and for humanity that God sent us Jesus, Emmanuel. And that spirit continues to be with us always and forevermore. Let us sing. Surely the presence single person remembered. That was it. <laughs> well, we handed them out. <laughs> You're getting there. I saw that. 